Rule 21 in baseball, subsection D. Do you know what that is? Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with it. Any player, umpire, or club, or league official or employee who shall bet any sum whatsoever upon any baseball game in connection with which the better has a duty to perform shall be declared permanently ineligible. Permanently ineligible. That's posted in every clubhouse in baseball, isn't it? A lot of players don't, 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 don't pay much attention to the fine print. But that's not fine print. That's not well, infield fly rule. That's not... It's not as big as you... As it's you not when a game like becomes official and whatever. That's the most important rule. That's the rule that goes to the integrity and to the authenticity of the game. So, so why would you violate it? Well, I wish I could answer that question, but I just can't. I was wrong. I just... Stupid. Worst thing I ever did in my life. You say in the I've had to live with that for 14 years too, Charlie. I finally said to him, uh, Mr. Rose, look, we have evidence that you bet on baseball. Have you ever bet on baseball? They asked me that I bet on, on baseball, and I said no. He said, I'm not that stupid. He said, I would never bet on baseball. And I told him I bet on football, and he said, we're not worried about that. Well, I thought it was right that he was just too smart. Nobody in their right mind uh, would bet on baseball. And we believed him. Everyone wanted to believe him. And many did, as Pete denied betting on baseball from 1989. I'm happy to look in the camera now and say I never bet on baseball, and I never bet on Cincinnati Red baseball. Right up until recently. Is your position still that you did not bet on baseball? Sure, sure. But now, finally, Pete Rose is ready to tell the truth. For 14 years, your case has hovered over baseball. Did you bet on baseball? <sighs> Yes, I did, and uh, that was my mistake, not coming clean a lot earlier. You're now saying, for the first time, publicly, yes, I bet on baseball. I bet on baseball in uh, 1987 and 1988. Did you bet on your own team? Yes. Did you ever... I believed in my team. I mean, I, I knew my team, but... It never altered the way I tried to run the game. Did you ever bet against your oh, own team? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> that would be, uh, that'd be the last thing I'd ever even, even consider. That's, because I want to win every game. How's that? Thank you. And that one to John, J-O-H-N. Pete today is 62. Maybe there's a bit more stomach and a bit less hair, but he's still a star. His legendary career as a player reflected in all the memorabilia, some of which he had to sell to pay off gambling debts. In 1987, Michael Sokoloff was a young sports writer covering the Reds, and he saw Rose taking up with a rough crowd. You know, he really had some tough-looking characters around him. They weren't baseball guys. And we learned later that they were, you know, bodybuilders, steroid pushers, bet runners. Tommy Giosa was one of those guys. We'd go to the racetrack and, and, and you know, to drop 10000 a night, you know, wouldn't be a, a big deal for him. And we didn't think it was a big deal. I mean, it's Pete Rose. Point stretch to the lead. But by then, Rose was gambling heavily on sports and was getting into trouble. Tell me how something like that gets out of control to the point where you're betting the sport where you know the penalties are so drastic. I can't remember the first time I made a baseball bet, but I don't think when I made that bet that I says, now what's going to happen to me if I get caught? I don't think I ever considered that. What Rose didn't bet on was that baseball would hire a tough former prosecutor, John Dowd, to look into the charges against him. And within a few days, he called me and said, Faye, we have a big problem here. He said, uh, there's evidence all over the place that Pete Rose bet on baseball. You're like a fresh piece of meat. <laughs> Word of the investigation leaked out, but Rose kept denying betting, even under oath. Six times, by my count, in that deposition, he well, asked you. When, once I say it, I'm not going to retract it. I'm going to continue to say the same thing. The evidence against Rose was mounting, including betting slips said to be in Rose's handwriting and records of phone calls from the Reds' clubhouse. Every night, Pete Rose would go in to the clubhouse at 7.15 and call the bookie. Now, we knew, 
who was the bookie because we had the number, we had the operator's name, and we also confirmed with the bookie that that's when Rose called him. By August 1989, even Rose realized the game was over. And so Vincent wrote up an agreement. He would agree that he would leave baseball for life, but he wouldn't admit, and also very importantly, he wouldn't deny the allegation that he bet on Major League Baseball. Under the rules of baseball, Rose could apply to be reinstated after one year. But in reality, nothing would happen unless Rose came clean, told the truth, and showed he'd reformed. With no confession, Rose would spend the next decade in baseball purgatory. I, I couldn't get a response from baseball for 12 years. It's like I died. And they, and they knew I died and they didn't want to bring me back. They were just going to let me rot. He said, well, what happened? You gonna tell me what happened? And finally you said to him, yes. Not finally, right, right away. I mean, I didn't beat around the bush. Now I elaborated as far as, you know, what I could remember as far as how often and stuff like that. Not every day, not every game. Did you walk away from that meeting, Pete? Good feeling. With a good feeling. I took this million pound weight off my shoulders. Confession being good for the soul. Yeah. Is there any agreement? Is there any understanding with the commissioner's office if you admit it now that that they would reinstate you? None. N none whatsoever. No guarantees. No. No. No guarantees. So I could be sitting out on the limb for the next twenty years. And what Rose said privately then, he says publicly now. It's time to clean the slate. It's time to uh, to take responsibility. Knowing what I know today, I mean, uh, uh, I'm 14 years late. 14 years late in, in saying, yes, I did bet on baseball. Is it a sickness, Pete? Uh, it can be. I mean, there are gambling addicts. Yes, but if you're addicted, how come you're not stopped? I don't think I ever gambled out of my means. You know, I didn't take the house payment money or the gas and electric bill money or that kind of money and gambled. That was a part of my life that, that you can't change. You wish it hadn't happened, but you can just guarantee yourself it won't happen again. Even though he now admits betting on baseball, Rose still denies a gambling addiction. And he still denies much of the most damning evidence that baseball gathered against him. I never picked up my phone and, and called a bookmaker and bet on a baseball game from the clubhouse. Never. Rose also still denies that those betting slips were his, even though an FBI handwriting expert says they were. I know that those betting slips weren't mine because I didn't have betting slips like that. I'm the only guy that knows what happened, regardless of what the investigator said. What can I say? I mean, I, I, I don't think he's coming clean, and that's too bad. I, you know, I think Pete would have been so much, and still would be much better advised to tell everything he knows. Um, why is he holding back? Um, there's, no, there's no mileage in that. But in fairness, all that is a debate about past history. How about today? When first banished from baseball, Rose was told if he was ever to be reinstated, he would have to reconfigure his life. So has he done it? I'm not going to go back to gambling. I mean, that's as simple as that. I'm, I got a little bit on the ball. How can baseball be sure? Well, they can never be sure. I let, mean, there's, let, all let you me. can do is give your word, and if the commissioner would ever give me a second chance, there, there's no way I could let him down. There's, there's, there's just some things you can't do. Can't do? Well, there are also some things friends tell him he shouldn't do. Recently, for instance, Rose bought part interest Dr. in a racehorse. He spends time at the track, and he says he does bet on the horses. Nothing wrong with that, perhaps, but friends wonder if it's not like an alcoholic going into a bar. I said, Pete, look, if you're going to get become reinstated into baseball, the next day you can't be at the track. You being in gambling environments is not good. If you're Pete Rose and you're... You're trying like hell to become reinstated into the base family of baseball, and the issue was gambling in your life. You damn sure need to figure out a way to give it up. But Mike Schmidt does think Rose understands that, knows what he has to do, 
and is willing to do it. And I start out with, with admittance and remorse and honesty, and it has to be from the heart. And uh, he needs to speak to his fans, and then he's going to have to speak to the Hall of Famers. And uh, that's all going to be hard, but Pete truly is remorseful and, and understands that he's going to have to make amends with all of those entities for this all to go away. Former Commissioner Faye Vincent isn't so sure. I think Pete's failed to understand this is not about himself. And his future and his future in baseball is all about his ability to see the other side of the issue, namely what's in baseball's interest. But the way Pete Rose sees it, his hey, desire to return to the game know. is in baseball's best interest. Hey, he feels he's paid Dolphins his debt and night. can now help the game. Is 14 years banished from the game enough punishment? We thought the last word should go to Pete Rose. Just look at that camera and say to the public and to the commissioner, as clearly as you can, what's the case for reinstating Pete Rose? Why should they reinstate you? Because I understand that I made a mistake. And there's not a damn thing I can do about that mistake. We can rehash it all we want. And if you make a mistake and you understand how big the mistake was, and you're willing to rectify that, and which I have. I mean, the furthest thing from my mind right now is making a bet on anything. I think people have a good idea that I'm sincere about uh, knowing what I did, and I shouldn't have did it. And you know, I lied. I lied about not, you know, not coming clean about betting on baseball. But when I look you in the eye and tell you that that phase of my life is gone and will never come back. I mean, I mean that with all sincerity in the world. Th that's why if the commissioner would ever give me a second chance, there, there's no way I could let him down. I owe baseball. Baseball don't owe me a damn thing. I owe baseball. And the only way I can make my peace with baseball is taking this negative somehow and making it into positive. It's the only way I can do it.